Today on the Lowdown, a Down Student podcast, the Macau family gives us a lowdown on life with the daughter Brian. Over to you, Hannah Marla. Thanks, Danielle. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Lowdown podcast. My name is Hannah Mahmood, and joining me is my wonderful co-host, Marla Folden. Good morning, Marla. Oh, good morning, Hannah. How are you? I'm good. I'm seeing through my office window some beautiful sunshine out there in Vancouver in February, so very nice. Yeah. That doesn't happen a lot in this city, so I'm enjoying it from my office. All right, so today we will be presenting you with one of our favorite episodes, which is our family spotlight. And for season nine, we're going to be meeting with, the- we will be joined by Sanjay Patel and Lindsay Matthews, mom and dad to daughters Zara and Bryn, and Bryn, who has Down syndrome. She and Lindsay are parents to Zara, age eight. And Bryn, age six. They moved from Ontario to Abbotsford, BC in 2013 and love it. Sanjay is an anesthesiologist and Lindsay is a medical physicist. They love to travel as a family, both locally and abroad. The kids especially love taking the city bus wherever they go. Bryn loves horses, bluey, swimming and baking. And Zara is into books and anything artsy. So things like drawing, drama, dance and piano. Bryn is funny curious and a determined kindergartner marla and i can co-sign on that one yep we both absolutely very well and also on the fact that she has a wicked sense of humor and some amazing facial expressions so welcome to the lowdown Lindsay and sanjay thank you so much for joining us today yeah thanks for having us our pleasure okay so our long-standing tradition is to start off our episode with a few secret questions just so our audience can get to know you as people so i'll start off on the first one and then i'll hand it over to marla Lindsay, let's start with you if you invent an ice cream flavor what ingredients would it have and what would you call it oh that's actually a really good question because Sanjay and I have been making our own ice cream oh. for a lot and we've done like some pretty crazy stuff yeah cool have you yeah we've done like everything yeah I think the only thing I did was we made a basil ice cream and that was how it but in theory it sounded good <laughs> in yeah. theory it sounded good yeah we do like it rum raisin rum raisin we do an eggnog ice song eggnog ice cream with christmas yeah that's always good we haven't done it in a while cinnamon yeah oh, <laughs> and the pork yeah. kids <laughs> oh yeah for sure totally now you can get the kids involved you know yeah the kids love being in the kitchen yeah yeah, yeah. that's quite wonderful i'll start with you sanjay if a genie granted you one wish what would you wish for oh I think right now the best wish for me would be time, more time to do fun stuff for me, watch movies, read books, spend more time with the kids, travel. Yeah, unlimited time if I can only ask one. Yeah, I think a lot of parents feel like that for yeah. sure. Let's get into our main topic here, which is Miss Bryn. Let's start at the beginning. So back when Miss Bryn was born, she did have some medical stuff going on. Can you tell us a little bit about how that was for you? Yeah. It was like six years ago. <laughs> yeah. Way back now. Her birthday was this last week. Last week. She just turned six last week. Yeah. yeah. At least six years. Time flies, but we didn't know she had Down syndrome when she was born. So that was a surprise diagnosis. And and, uh, yeah, found out when she was born in the weeks following her birth. She spent some time in the NICU in Abbotsford and then had some airway issues and was struggling with that and got sent to to the NICU in Pet Children's and spent some time there and had a cardiac diagnosis and then spent some time at NICU in Surrey and then we went back to the NICU in Vancouver. Yeah, we did a little NICU tour around the province. Mm. But yeah, she, uh, yeah, they moved her to Surrey so that we could be closer to home. Which is nice. nice. Yeah. And then overall, it was about two months before she came home. home. Yeah. And then she's been home. Yeah, no problem since then. Yeah, it was interesting because she was always, I feel like she was a bit of an outlier. Even the physicians were, weren't sure what to do with her and what to make of. She has things going on with her airway and heart. So they or just other like little random things. They were like, oh, like this is the most rare thing to happen. And we're like, of course. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like, but we turn around that way. So yeah, but we figured it all out and we brought her home and that's seven. Lots of medical equipment and stuff like that in the beginning. And she had uh, G-tube and went through all of that in the beginning. And yeah, she's worked really hard to transition away from the G-tube and to build up her, I guess, strength and her airway and everything. Yeah, her airway was the biggest issue for a long time. Just her work of breathing with her airway was just very floppy. So she had laryngomalacia. Yeah. 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 
just for people listening, if they're wondering why you had such a tour with the NICUs in BC, the NICUs have different levels of care that they're qualified to provide. And like our provincial children's hospital provides the highest level of care. So when things are really complicated, kids go over there and then they try and go back and come closer to home as as it's possible to do that. So that's why you were on such a, a goose chase. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we requested a transfer out of Vancouver to be closer in Surrey. Mm-hmm. There was a spot and we had the positions and the team there were excellent. It was just, yeah, closer to home so we didn't have to drive as much. And I think when, when a little one has having a long stay in the NICU, it is a lot about that long drive, right? Are you doing that every day and it's a couple of hours in both directions and you have another little toddler at that point? It's a lot. You were describing how she's worked incredibly hard to transition off of things like the G-tube and some home oxygen and things like that. Are those complications that she had initially in her very young life still affecting her now? Or is that pretty much a chapter that's behind you, would you say? Yeah, I would say that's a chapter that's pretty behind us now. I feel like, yeah, the medical world took up the first sort of two to three years of her life. Yeah, what, six surgeries in the first two years? But yeah, I think we've pretty much put all of that, feels like we put all of that behind us. And she's eating really well now. And just even like things like moving really well. She took her four years to be able to walk. She was very determined to get around. But yeah, so she's pushed through things like the hypotonia and mm-hmm. all of that sort of thing thing to build her strength and yeah she functions very much like a normal kindergartner these days yeah she is positively stressed in here these days yeah. which is yeah. wonderful yeah, <laughs> yeah you run for around she plays janet is around especially if our yeah one of our colleagues has a little pug that Bryn loves to hang out with i was gonna say i've been working with Bryn for quite a while and it's just amazing to see her level of confidence that goes up from when she was able to independently move around and we think we take those things for granted where she has that autonomy over how she's going to move. Her perspective has changed. She can go wherever she wants. And it's just been so great to see her kind of go through that journey and to see where she's at now and becoming more and more confident. Yeah, it's been really great to see that. And I think it's a really heartening message for families who are maybe three or four years behind where you guys are now and maybe experiencing some of the same things and wondering, are we ever going to get to the end of this chapter? And it, it does. It can get there. Every child's different, but you can move through a lot of things, which I think is really helpful to remember. If you don't... Right now, the medical stuff, there's no cardiac stuff. We follow up with cardiology once a year. Her breathing, she's pretty quiet at night. You don't really notice any... She's eating well. She's got her favorite foods. She's a little picky, but all kids are. She plays. Yeah, she runs around. She The only appointments now are, are her therapy appointments. So that's the main appointments in her life at this point. Yeah, I don't know. But I was going to say along those lines like that. I think that's been a real key thing for us is finding the right team to help her be successful and supporting her in her growth and development. And I think we try the typical therapies that were standardly available to everybody. And I remember Child Development Center, two older men coming in to try and watch me breastfeed when we were trying to wean her off the G-tube initially. It was just like, I just knew it wasn't right and it wasn't the right fit. And we were fortunate to have the extended medical coverage and we'll be able to put a different team in place. And I think that that's been hugely important in where we're at today. I leave was Riley's speech therapist with ESRF, obviously, and uh, she was hugely in- instrumental in helping Bryn transition off the G tube and, and working mm-hmm. in therapy and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's uh, her specialty area. And yeah. it's great that she got to work with you guys and help you along those steps because there's, yeah, it's a technical thing and safety thing. So it's good to have somebody who really is familiar and feels really confident in providing support for that. Let's talk a little bit about when you found out that little Miss Bryn had down syndrome which is when she was born how did that go how did your families receive that news how did you receive that news we're hoping the conversation was done well but you never know yeah our experience was unique because i don't know if it was unique but <laughs> felt unique Brynn was i guess in our hospital they call it code pink she struggled with her airway pretty quickly. She turned blue and they threw her out of the room. And so we didn't really get to have any initial time with her. So she was out and away and we didn't really know what was going on. And then one of Sanjay's colleagues, who's a pediatrician, came back and shared the diagnosis with us or his suspicion of the diagnosis. It wasn't that point. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like it was done in a positive way. And yeah. It's really good to hear. Yeah. He's very, and he's, he still is Brittany's pediatrician he's an excellent physician yeah and he told us what he knew at that point and said we at that point they weren't even suspecting any cardiac issues her heart was fine it was her airway that was the main concern Mm -hmm. Uh, 
yeah, they were, he was supporting her as best he could and told us what kind of the next steps would be for getting a diagnosis and doing other investigations. And she was in the nursery for, for I think about a week before yeah. she got moved. Yeah, a week or two because she went to one out. So yeah, we, we're lucky. We have a very good network of friends in the hospital as well. So that was the hospital I worked. So yeah, know a lot of people there. Yeah. And changed a little bit as well. Yeah. yeah. It was very positive. It was hard to have to. Yeah. yeah. Navigating the healthcare system, given your experiences as in your jobs can make it a little bit easier to just know what's how to get around different things and who to talk to. Right. Yeah. yeah I think it's really different to know the people and know the roles that they play and to not find all of that new. Some of other families that we work with, they don't have experience in the medical community or the yeah. medical field at all. And so it's a lot at yeah. once. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was a lot for us. We weren't really expecting it. Yeah. Oh, it was. We didn't do any testing before. So yeah, it's just time to process. Did you guys manage to connect with anybody in the community from early on, from within the Down syndrome community? There's a few different parent groups and people who offer that support role who have an older child. Were you able to connect with anybody? I'm assuming you were pretty. Yeah, we had, there was a really great social worker in the Abbotsford Hospital and she had connected us in those first few days with the Fraser Valley Down Syndrome Society. A couple of the parents came in and talked to us. Actually, they came into the Surrey NICU. They were hoping to connect with us. And yeah, they came into Surrey to see us there and came talked about their experiences and brought some photo books and things like that. And yeah, it was, that was a good connection. So that was, yeah, that was really the only connection we had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a very positive one. We met some of the parents in the nursery for there for other reasons, but yeah, we're, yeah. we end up having lunch and snacks with them in the, yeah, yeah, in, in the, the parents' room, rooms, the parent rooms. Yeah, 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 people that weren't going through the exact same thing, but similar, similar, and their yeah. kid, their little ones there for a while. Yeah, so now we talked about Brenna, six years old now, she just turned six. Lucky. I still can't believe it because I can remember when she was tiny when she came here, and it's really great to see where she's at now. And I know in the bio, it talked a little bit about how you described her personality, her likes, and her interests. And Brenda's also now in kindergarten. And how has that journey been so far for her? We're all very good. Yeah, we're at, we're fortunate to have a, a brand new school in our neighborhood. So we. Um, beautiful building with wonderful staff who've been very supportive of Brandon yeah. transition and I think yeah the benefit of coming into a new building is built with accessibility and a huge yes. mind which large spaces has been really wonderful but things like Brandon we haven't talked about it yet but Brandon has hearing issues as well so there's camp I think they call it sound walls or sound boards. Like all the teachers wear microphones and those are all designs. Like it's very, it's a very up-to-date and modern building that has those little things that you might not think about that really help Bryn to be successful in the classroom. Yeah. And the kindergarten teacher is just phenomenal. Just Team of EAs are very good. Yeah, she has three EAs that she works with throughout the day and they've all been... They've, they've all been great. Great, yeah. 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 Yeah, we just had the principals very, very supportive and on top of things. We've been meeting. Yeah, we had you had a lot of meetings before Bryn started kindergarten. Yeah. Just yeah, planning stuff. Like said, what teacher would fit her best? And Miss Proger, yeah, has been amazing. And yeah, yeah, it's been overall, yeah. And she's she likes going. We drop her off, and she has a smile when she walks into the room, and her friends wave and say hi, and then pick her up at the end of the day. She's happy, smiling, very telling. But yeah. she comes out, she's happy. Yeah, you can tell she had a fun day. It's all you can ask for, right? For yeah. her to be going in and happy coming out. Yeah. Sunday, you did mention you had a lot of meetings before Bryn started kindergarten, and there were quite a few things that you wanted to update them on. For our families that are listening that are just starting the kindergarten journey, what are some pieces of advice you would give to them? What are some of the key pieces of information you shared with Bryn's school team? to ensure she had like a good start at the beginning of the year. I would say you need to go back even further than that because okay. yeah, let's do I think the reason that we were successful is because oh, there's so many connections to consider, but through the Fraser Valley Down Syndrome Society and the connections we made that eventually we would go to their play groups. We talked to the other families in the community and we were really fortunate to hear about an incredible preschool program. I was going to ask you about that. Sort of yeah. Preschool. Yeah. Shout out to Barbara. She's the most incredible woman who's 
run a very inclusive preschool program that's mandatory and like always accepted children with disabilities. That's just her specialty. She has a passion for working with children with all kinds of different needs and, and support needs and yeah, all, fabulous yeah, support features. team there yeah. too. Yeah, she has a whole team of people. And so we knew what the ideal situation was like going into kindergarten because Bryn had been so incredibly supportive of preschool and we knew what they were doing with her with respect to little things like feeding or support aids or what kind of sign language they were using with her she brings us a lot of sign language so we knew when to ask for going into kindergarten we knew what success looked like for Bryn with her two days a week and then three days a week in preschool and so yeah we just went in with the high expectation and exactly like they were going to be in in preschool or as close as possible and and so we were asking for sign language support and that was really the big thing is how Brenda was going to communicate that I wanted to ensure that she was going to hit the ground running successful and have communication, a communication plan in place. Brynn had also been actively using her AEC device at preschool. So she uses cough drop on her tablet and I wanted that transition to be seamless as well. So those were really the goals and that's what those initial meetings that I had with the school in the spring centered around. No, we did come to learn that one, I don't know if this is true everywhere, but in Abbotsford, you need to be, or we were told you need to be fully hard of hearing in both ears, which Brit is not. She's hard of hearing in one ear in order to really receive specific level of sign language support. So she was they told us she was ineligible, but but I was able to provide the school with lots of resources with respect to all of the signs for new and work with them ahead of time on her communication device and how to navigate through the pages and find the words that she usually uses. So all of that, were, those were the things that we were working on how to sign. Yeah, right so, now, EA, some teacher, I'll do a little bit of sign with her and we use her AAC and, yeah. and with her friend, little friend at school, she's doing, using her AEC and they use it too. And they have a little conversation. Excellent. Yeah. So I'm hearing, I think two things that I want to pull out of what you've just described. The first one is, and I think this is relevant for all families, you can't ask for what you don't know about. So being supported by a team that's really adept and really understands supporting kids with extra needs or different needs is helpful going forward forward. So yay to preschool. We love that. And the second thing that you're describing is that all of the effort that you put into getting things set up has prevented this kind of lag time that we often see for kids starting a new school or a new school year where things don't get set up in the first week, certainly, and sometimes not until like January. And that gives the little kiddo or the little child a lot of time to not have a good time at school. And this hasn't happened for you, which is wonderful because everybody was ready and knew almost as much as you do about how Bryn communicates and what she would need to get through the day in a happy way, which sounds like it was worth it. Sounds yeah. like it was a great oh, thing. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Another thing we did was she didn't go full time until basically after the winter, September to December forget how we started yeah we've been very slowly in yes. her hours so we would go to like only two hours yeah we would go till so there's like the morning recess so she would go till morning recess and then she was going till before lunch and then she would stay for lunch and then we worked up to staying for lunch and the lunchtime recess so that was the issue we had because we didn't know how well she would eat lunch at school yeah it'd be a bit picky yeah yeah she it's so she eat now she comes home and her lunch is like fully done she eats better i think yeah mr nark yeah. And the, the teeth yeah. there get her eating better than she says at home. Oh, yeah. Kids are full of surprises. Their kids eating. At least she wants copy what they're doing. But. Yeah, that's a really good point. Absolutely. Because I think I'm so happy that the school was open to giving Brynn a chance to slowly and to adapt and get used to it at her pace. Yeah. And because it, it is exhausting to be in kindergarten for anybody, but for somebody, for kids with Down syndrome or for people like Brynn had additional things that she overcame, it's taking a lot of time because preschool wasn't full day either, right? So it's, she's, yeah. it, you, you can't go from two hours a day to a full day. So it was so great to that you had that support where they were like, let's just play it by ear and follow Brynn's lead and see where she's at. And, and you're right, Sanjay, it's 
phenomenal to see some of our kids, how they develop new skills and new ways when they have peers around them doing the same thing, right? Oh, I'm yes. like, our kids, when you start kindergarten, they're like, oh, this is how I'm supposed to do stuff because my friends are doing it this way. And it's pretty cool to see how much more learning happens that first year in kindergarten, socially, especially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for half the school, she would come home and like you see in the afternoon, she'd fall asleep on the couch at home because she got her. Yeah. Whereas nowadays she comes home after a full day. Now she's in full days, comes home, like girls both have a snack, uh, they play around and she doesn't, she might lie down on the couch, but she doesn't fall asleep, lie down for 10, 15 minutes and then get up and play. And yeah. And when you think about it between September, when the school year started, now we're in February, that's a relatively short time to build that much stamina for a child who was falling asleep after two hours to now doing six plus hours in the school day. Props to her. That's a lot. Yeah. 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 Said, well, it's determined she is. They usually have a quiet afternoon. That's what Ms. Crozier is saying. Yeah. It helps. And, it, and it benefits everybody, right? It's not just for Brynn, it benefits all the students if we could just ease off on the expectations and then demands towards the end of the day so everybody can have some energy reserve for when they go home and want to interact with their families and their siblings, right? It can't all be used up at school. And I think that often happens a lot with our kids mm-hmm. too. You were mentioned, we mentioned Brynn has a wonderful big sister, Zara. I would love to know what the relationship is like between the two girls. Oh, they have an awesome relationship. Yeah. <laughs> They just they play like, a lot. Any normal siblings, they play around. Bryn likes to pick on Zara. See, <laughs> play what happens is it? Yeah, they love to. Bryn will oh, copy a lot of what Zara's yeah. doing. They play lots together. Zara will play the toys and stuff that Brittany's playing with, and then sometimes she'll go up and do her own thing. And Brittany's uh, does her own thing, but yeah, often they. They play together well. And Brynn's picked up a real love of books, I think, from Zara, too. Mm-hmm. Like, she's got her nose in a book all the time, so Brynn will go get a book and sit on the chair beside her. And I think it, initially it was just a copy, but now she's throwing out these books to her as we were to it. It's so uh, cute. Yeah. We've had Zara come in and observe a couple of sessions. She's a very curious intelligent girl where she's really wanting to know why her sister is working on certain things at least in ot sessions right and she has some great questions so it's really great that she's curious about it she's interested and she wants to participate in those things too just builds the relationship more but yeah. are able yeah. to see what each person is doing so yeah. and she wants to help out so you know, doesn't always necessarily want to go to a from a to b on our timetable yeah oh for sure days when it's time yeah. to get ready for school but they're yes great at getting her toys and trying to like tease her to get upstairs with them and yeah he's right in there trying to help out in transitions that can be a little tough for Britt as well so that's pretty cool to see she just gets it and she can figure out sometimes better than we can how what toy I need or what I should do to just help make things a little easier to make those transitions a little smoother so that's always cool to cool to observe and I think of that I know Marla I hear that a lot with siblings when parents are just like I couldn't figure out what they needed but the sibling was like right on it right or they just have a special language or a special way of understanding and just like low demand low expectation let's just try to figure it out and it just works better beautifully sometimes in those situations so it's so great to see that what are some of those big life lessons that Britt has taught you in her six years of life so far go slow take your time enjoy what you have yeah she's just taught me so much about what it means to really work hard but I was thinking I think about the other day and talking about her walking and stuff she was so motivated by Zara and wanting to play with her when she was young and she wanted to move so bad and she just she's been working so hard on that for such a long time she used to long roll around the house just to get in there you, yeah, she would literally just roll because her leg yeah. wouldn't take her where she wanted to go. So she would just roll around the house. And then she got to doing this thing where she would be on her back and she would like push with her legs and she would literally like a little broom around the floor, air full of crumbs. But there she was. Like, but she got there. Yeah. So yeah, it works in that sense. But yeah, she would slide around like that. She's just been, she worked so hard at everything. And she's so determined just to see her, like kids, I would say, don't have that determination to go after something they really want the way, yeah. the way she's been doing since she was so little. And it's just mind-blowing to me. I think it's really incredible. Yeah. What are your dreams for Brent's future? It's a really heavy question towards the end, but I always, but it's always good to just, just put it out there. Yeah. We just want to support her when, and feel like whenever she's in, whatever she's in, enjoying and, and yeah. if she's passionate about. Yeah. Support her. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice if she, yeah. Who knows where she'll be living with us or if she'll at that point be with some support on her own 
or if she has a part-time job, something that she really loves, work on a coffee shop or wherever. Yeah. Something that she's happy and doing something that you could tell that she's happy with. And her, her activities or little things that she likes to do regularly, just she'll keep like, keep doing that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a wonderful answer. Happiness yeah. and just be able to do what she wants to do, really. Yeah. 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 I love that. It yeah. strikes me that her, she knows what she likes and her opinions oh. are clear. So she'll <laughs> take you there. We just have to yeah. just pay out of the way. For the right. She knows yeah. where she wants to go. <laughs> yeah. She knows what she wants. It's funny. Once a month, we come home and go to her horseback riding, her hippotherapy, which is the horseback riding physiotherapy. So literally every Wednesday when I open the car door, when we get home, she's signing the horse sign to ask damn it the day to go horseback ride yeah okay i know what you want i know what you're interested in yeah, yeah. yeah. she knows yeah. her still she'll, she'll be telling us that's for sure lizzie you had mentioned a little bit earlier about Bryn's journey to kindergarten and you had some really great advice for families about finding the supports and build a team around them that will support them the and your vision as a family. Do either of you or both of you have any additional advice for families that are listening to this and are trying to navigate this journey of Down syndrome with their loved one? They're an Abbotsford. Go to Bratha Source. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, I would, yeah. Don't find the local community too. Like we're able to participate in the play groups at the Fraser Valley Down Syndrome Society. It's helpful to hang out with other families that are in similar situations, even if it's not exactly the same as what you're going through. I remember oh, the first the first one we went to, we happened to meet two other kiddos that were also on G tubes, right? And we didn't know anyone at that point. So that's it was just complete coincidence. It was just special to have that experience. And I think what was also instrumental early on for us was getting that little bit of education. We really didn't know anything about Down syndrome when we started this journey. And we were fortunate to find some research and found the DSRF website. And at that point in time, you guys were running a new parent group, or I guess it wasn't, it was a new parent seminar series. So we would come on Saturdays once a month and learn about a different topic. There was OT, SLP, there was dentistry, they had a pediatrician one week. Like it was just, it was incredible. And we connected with a lot of families that way too. But just to have that education piece, I learned so much during that year, during those seminars. And I think even though those aren't happening anymore, I think there's ways through this podcast, other podcasts, there's so many other platforms to pick up that education and information. So mm-hmm. that really does help you set up early on too and find your people like for us it's for us it's you guys for us it's like Hannah and Bryn are magic together it's just the most incredible thing to see by the way she's responded to just certain people just connect with her and find those people that can get on her wavelength or your child's wavelength because not everyone can do that she operates I feel like at a little bit of a different frequency and you have to put yourself in your frequency and it's beautiful if you can do that but not everybody can and to find the people that can and go with it and don't worry about what you're supposed to be doing or anything else or when somebody else says if if you have what works for you then go with it that's a perfect way of ending it thank you both so much for taking the time to talk to us and for sharing your family story I know a lot of people that will be listening will hear hear nuggets of wisdom, we'll be able to relate, we'll be able to feel supported, and we'll hopefully be proud of Bryn from afar and proud of your family from afar, even if you don't know her, because she's done a lot. That girl, she's come through a lot, and she's continuing to show us all that she can do. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.